Hi, I'm Daniel Butler. Welcome to another edition of America's Dumbest Criminals. On this episode of America's Dumbest Criminal, a crook packs his bags and makes a run for it. A kid does a moronic macarena on a friend's car. A salivating senior expresses his feelings for a local store. And a guy in his birthday suit gets pulled over for speeding. Uh, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. All this and more on this week's episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. Walk away from the car! Here's your host, Daniel Butler. Shopping can be like running a marathon. Your heart is pumping, the adrenaline running through your veins, the anticipation can be overwhelming. Grab your selections. On your mark, get set, go. Unfortunately, this guy jumped the gun and had to be disqualified from any further shopping sprees. Besides, he had already shopped until he was dropped. I believe a person should always be prepared. A mental checklist is always a sure bet for success. Target, check. Mask, check. Gun to get jewels, check. Bag for jewels, check. Getaway car, check. <laughs> Escape route. Westbound, westbound turn, westbound on third. Suspect is gaining speed, he's pulling away from us. 2 at 15 we're out of the pursuit. Check. Full tank of gas. Mm. Police officer, put your hands up. Turn forward. Don't move. Don't move. Five to ten years. Check. <laughs> officer Mark Castile of Garland, Texas, was dispatched to back up the fire department on an injured person report. At first glance, the man appeared to have been changing a tire when the vehicle had fallen on his foot. Only problem, the car wasn't his. We get there, and this man looked like he was changing a tire, and the vehicle had fallen on his foot, and he was trapped by the foot. And we go up to help this young man and uh, get to looking at the car and realize that the column was peeled. It was actually a stolen car. He was stripping it when it fell on his foot and trapped him, <laughs> trapped by the foot, begging us to get the car off his foot. And with that, they took the car off his foot so he could hoof it straight to jail. A former detective with the Andalusia, Alabama Police Department told us about a baseball player who thought he was safe at home. When the officer arrived on the scene, he saw tracks leading from the back door across the yard and up to a house. The tracks appeared to be baseball shoes with cleats on them. Glass followed the distinctive footprints up to the door of the house where they disappeared. One look at the dumb criminal's shoes and the detective knew he had his man. Yeah, how you doing, sir? Good. You live here? I live here. What'd you do? Just hit a home run next door? Uh, I was playing baseball. Yeah. Okay, why don't we go to the station? Turn around and place your hands behind your back for me, sir. The man was arrested and charged with the break-in. He had just struck out. You have the right to remain seated. Cool. And now, Crimes of the Week with Daniel Butler and Beaumont Bacon. Hi, I'm Daniel Butler, and this is my vine-ripened co-host, Beaumont Bacon. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> a handcuffed prisoner had managed to get away from an officer and fled the scene. The officer gave chase and followed the guy for a few blocks into an alley. Why they do that? Criminals always seem to find those back alleys, it's don't a, they? It's a natural homing instinct. Mm, we well, their legs. <laughs> deciding it was time to end the chase, the officer took his nightstick and threw it down at the goon's feet, hoping to trip him up. The spiteful sprinter laughed and watched as the nightstick soared by him and into a wall. I bet he wasn't laughing for long. Well, you're right, because he was focusing so much of his attention on the nightstick that he failed to see the van that had pulled into the alley in front of him. He hit that van with full force and voila, the pursuit was over. I bet the officer got the last laugh. He <laughs> sure did. Good for him. Well, so did this counselor at a correctional center. One of his inmates wrote a letter to his girlfriend that said, Dear Becky, I'll be on work detail in the park this Friday, so leave the drugs and beer by that big oak tree. The guards are so dang stupid here, there's no way I'll ever get caught. 
love Billy. What a touching letter. Well, his brilliant plan fell apart because instead of putting the jail as the return address, he sent the letter to the jail, where it wound up on the warden's desk. I'm sure the warden passed the inmate sentiments on to those stupid guards, huh? <laughs> Which brings us to our vidiot of, of the, the week. week. Let's try that again. Let's vidiot, vidiot of, of the week. week. From all the stories all the that we've stories. received this week, this one was our favorite. A woman had just parked her car when she was approached by a crook with a gun who forced her out of the driver's seat and demanded her keys. Unfortunately, when the goon jumped into the car, he realized that it was a stick shift. He only knew how to drive an automatic. He got out of the car and told the woman to get back in and drive him somewhere. So she got in, locked the doors, backed out, and drove away. Ha! <laughs> Leaving the stunned stick-up artist in a cloud of dust. Much like the contents of his head. Mm-hmm. Dusty in there. His cue. One would think that if you stole a vehicle, you would want to do as little as possible to draw attention to yourself. However, this dumb criminal obviously threw caution to the wind. Officers made a rather unusual traffic stop one afternoon in Houston, Texas. A guy was clocked doing 90 miles per hour on a motorcycle and not wearing the required attire. It turned out that the motorcycle was stolen and when the officers asked for the driver's information, he was at a loss. He didn't have his wallet or any identification or any clothes for that matter. They quickly arrested our cool rider and took him down to the station for fitting into his new designer jail jeans and some ointment for his chafed cheeks. This next surveillance tape shows a grumpy old man who picked a rather disgusting way to make his mark on society. Unhappy with the way a local watch shop had repaired his timepiece, this disgruntled grandpa decided to stop by after hours and pay the store a visit. He also visited the shop owner's car. The shop owner promptly had the police visit the salivating senior and have him arrested for defacing public property and drooling without a license. Coming up next on America's Dumbest Criminals, a kid does a moronic macarena on a friend's car. A robber gets a little surprise during work. Don't move. Put the gun down. Put it down. A disgruntled employee takes some work home with him. A crook gets a special drug screening. I'll still just second for you, will you? What the hell is that? Still to come on America's Dumbest Criminal. What are you doing, officer? Go back to the couch and assume the position. A Sacramento officer was called to a local motel to investigate the possible theft of a ghetto blaster, and the suspect wished to lodge a complaint. Officer Chip Dull drove up to the motel parking lot and noticed something a little out of the ordinary about the victim. And I'm talking to the guy, and the story doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But when I'm looking at him, I see some white powder around his nostril of his nose. I asked him about his nose, and he goes, well, oh, I just had a powder donut. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, how come there's nothing around your no mouth? And just, just tell me your name. But first of all, take your hand out of your pocket. You know. What's your last name? And he won't give me his name, and he won't take his hand out of his pocket. He has this blank stare looking right past me. I'm thinking, uh-oh, something's wrong here. And all of a sudden, he bolts off, takes off running. And after about 100 yards, I catch up to him and handcuff him and all that, and I'm walking back to the car, and I search him, and he's got a loaded handgun in his pocket. Um, he's got a few grams of uh, methamphetamine in his pocket, about $900 in cash. And I went back to his car where he was looking for his ID, and so I searched the same bags, and I found a, about another three ounces of narcotics and a scale. And all of this could have been avoided <laughs> because and he, had, he had no reason to call us to begin with. He had no crime, but he wanted to make a complaint. And because of his ignorance, and again, those stupid pills kicked in, <laughs> and he got charged with nine different felony charges and uh, went back to prison. You can take the man out of his business, but you can't take the business out of the man, as we'll see in this next story. An undercover cop had just cuffed a drug dealer and was on his way back to his cruiser when a car pulled up. What's this one? Hey man, the cop's gone. The cops gone yet? Ain't no cops around here. Really cool. Listen. 
Shut up, don't say anything. Man, I got a party tonight. I'm looking to score some dope right now, man. I'm, I'm really desperate. The officer decided to play along and use the dope that he had just taken from his cuffed con to set the new guy up. Even the detained dealer got caught up in the game. How's this? Oh, let me check this out. Wow. I'll take it for 50 bucks. How about what you think, man? No way, man. That's a $100 bag. $100? You really think so? Let me check it out again. How bad do you want it? Oh, man. I've been looking all over. I couldn't find any. Oh, yeah, 100 bucks, man. I'll okay, really... hey. Yeah. The way I do business, I, I I need you to shake my hand. Oh, really? I, I shake yeah. hand with all the people I do business oh, with. Yeah, there's no problem, man. I can do that. Huh? Let's have a good party tonight, huh? Oh, yeah, I got a great party. What? What's, what's, what are you doing? There you go. Hey, turn around, man. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Or what, wow. man? Sealing the deal with a handshake, the officer took the yuppie and the drug dealer down to the station. A yuppie and the drug dealer. Kind of sounds like a, a new TV show, doesn't it? This guy in Hollywood, Florida, found out the hard way that the element of surprise is a situation that works well for everyone, not just dumb criminals. You can see that this convenience store was having a slow night until this gun-toting goon rushed in and demanded the money from the clerk behind the counter. He expected her to give him the money and then make his clean getaway. What he didn't expect was the police officer, who just happened to be in the back of the store doing a routine business check, hear him demand the money. The cop immediately identified himself and drew his gun, too. The surprised suspect immediately surrendered and was quickly taken to another counter to do his business, the booking counter. Employees at a construction site in East Texas complained to their security company because a variety of personal items had been disappearing during the night. One worker in particular was disturbed about the loss of two gold coins. That's when the manager of the security company realized that he might be able to help. He told the man that just two days ago he had to fire a security guard. And when he did, the guy said, Man, I don't need this job. I got $80,000 worth of gold coins right here. These are your gold coins? Yeah, my gold coins. Well, needless to say, the coins bought him a one-way ticket straight to jail. Freeze! Drop the remote. Several cops have realized that if you ask a dumb criminal to confess, they usually won't. But if you give them a choice, they will. A case in point from Houston, Texas. We did a ring case. We had 13 stolen vehicles. We got 12 of them back. We had one more to go. Mm -hmm. My new partner at the city were driving up Washington. I said, man, there it is. He goes, what? I said, there's that car we're looking for. There's this Monte Carlo sitting there. The reason we knew it, we had a picture of it. Mm -hmm. So we go on over there, and we sit up, and of course, the car, nobody shows up, nobody shows up. So we said, well, hell, let's go ahead and just pick it on up. Mm -hmm. The uh, owner of the car calls us up over to the city and says, hey, y'all took my car. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and bring your paperwork, and you know, when you get a statement from you. So he shows up, his buddy brings him over from the appliance place, and I said, hmm. So I walk out in the parking lot and see what they pulled up in. That car's stolen. So we went ahead and I told the guy, I says, hey, listen, I said, we're doing free inspections today. Why don't you go ahead and pull your car around the back and let's inspect it, make sure it ain't stolen. Guy goes, okay, so we're putting it up on the rack in the warehouse. And I look down, there's a, one of them little old matchboxes in there. I said, hmm, I wonder what's in the matchbox, so opening up some cocaine in there. So uh, I walk in, I said, man, I, said, I got some bad news for you, man. I says, uh, find this cocaine in the car. I says, and uh, the car's stolen. He says, man, he says, I don't know nothing about that stolen car. He says, now that cocaine's mine. He says, but I don't know nothing about that stolen car. <laughs> Matter of fact, he gave me a confession. I mean, he gave me a statement saying, you know, he bought the cocaine and everything. So it was a slam dunk case after we got done. <laughs> Who says that toys are only for children? This star trooper played a hunch and beamed this dumb criminal off the streets and into the brig. In Sacramento, California, an officer made first contact with a local drug dealer that had managed up to that point to elude the police. The cocky crackhead didn't seem concerned until the logical lawman, without saying a word, reached into his pocket, produced an electronic toy that he had recently purchased, and scanned the confused con. What are you doing, officer? Uh, it's my cocaine detector. Hold still, let me check. <laughs> this is my cocaine detector. Oh, it tells shoot. me you got cocaine on you. Oh, 
Works pretty good, doesn't it? The officer's hunch was right, and the frustrated Ferengi immediately forked over the cocaine that he had in his pocket and was put on the next shuttlecraft bound for the USS Penitentiary, warped factor 10. A gang member in Murray, Utah, got his revenge on a rival member's car and also got caught on tape. He had spotted the rival car in a service station repair lot and decided to take out his frustrations on the car. He proceeded to jump up and down on the roof and hood, break all the windows, and slash all of the tires. He left very little behind for the police to work with, except for the surveillance tape and his wallet. Evidently, while doing his moronic macarena, his wallet fell out of his pants and onto the ground. So, with his help, police were able to catch our little dirty dancer a few hours later as he was cooling his heels at home. A smart crime is hard to find, but there's no shortage of dumb criminals. See you next week on America's Dumbest Criminals. On the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. A careless criminal stuffs the wrong crustacean down his pants. A parachuter runs into a little technical difficulty. A confused crook runs right into the arms of the law. Hey, come get in with you, Chuck. Look at that idiot. <laughs> An escaped con forgets his glasses. The laughs just keep coming on the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. And I don't know if you're familiar with Houston or not, but they have a lot of, of uh, ferries. So one night we got a call of a woman cling, clinging to the back of the ferry, and she was clinging to the back of the, the ferry that was, was not in operation, screaming for help. And uh, she said, what happened? And she says, well, she says, I pulled, was coming down southbound in Crosby Lynchburg, and she says, and I stopped for the railroad crossing. She says, the, the, the arms were dying, the lights were going, the lights were flashing. She says, but I looked both ways and didn't see anything, so she says she cut the barrier because there obviously wasn't a train coming. Well, what she did is she drove right off the, la the ramp to onto the ferry straight into the water. <laughs> yes, one time I was on days. Well, they pulled out a priority one man screaming for help in his backyard. Just before we had official training officer, I was training a rookie. And uh, I said, well, come on, let's go ahead and get it. You know, we need to get on over there. We weren't, but probably 10 blocks away from it. So we jump in the old car and we, man, we hammered on over there. And these, all the citizens are out front. And they flag us on down. And so we're trying to say, man, there's a guy screaming for help in the backyard really loud. He needs help. So I said, okay. So we, the, the gate's locked. So we go into the gate, the house next to it. And we, they got one of them security fences, you know, an eight-foot security fence. So I look on over it and I don't see nothing. Nobody in the backyard, you know, except the guy's got a goat. And it's got them horns and a goat. I said, well, heck. I'll send that old rookie on over to make sure the coast is clear, you know? <laughs> so I tell the old rookie, I says, hey, I, says, I got you covered. We're up in the tree. I says, I got you covered. Go ahead and jump the fence and see if you can find an open window. I said, I'll make sure nothing happens to the goat. <laughs> so he jumps the fence, and first window he goes to, it's unlocked. I said, all right. So, you know, he opens up the window. I said, go inside and watch me. So I jump the fence and go inside the open window. So we're sitting there. We're trying to clear the house. I said, you just... Bah, bah, help, help. What's the goat screaming for help? There ain't no man screaming for help. It's this goat sounding like he's, you know, he, he, I guess that's the way goats talk. So I said, well, we look at each other, so we jump back over the fence, you know. So I tell the people, I said, hey, do you know there's a goat in that guy's backyard? Oh, there ain't no goat in the backyard. I said, oh, yeah, there is. So, you know, we, we cleared the call. So uh, since the dispatcher screened the call so well, we went back in service, and I said, well, clean, uh, clear the call as uh, a man screaming for help, or man screaming for help to a goat in heat and show us back in. On there. <laughs> so the dispatcher thought that was real funny because the, the thing was radio science for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Dum, 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 dum.